This video showcases the lessons learned from transfemoral ICA stenting in a patient with a bovine arch. The patient is a 94-year-old female with the past medical history of hypertension, hypothyroidism, tongue cancer, and resultant neck irradiation, and a past surgical history of TAVR. The patient presented with fluctuating right arm weakness and an unsteady gait, and the MRI showed left centrum semiovale infarct. Here is her neck CT angiography, revealing severe stenosis of the left internal carotid artery. Also significant narrowing of the ECA on the same side. Duplex carotid ultrasound reveals significant stenosis in the mid portion of the, the left internal carotid artery with calcified lesions and significantly elevated velocities. After ultrasound guided access through the right common femoral artery, a wire loaded Simmons 2 catheter was advanced through the aortic arch. Intraoperative transcranial Doppler monitoring is visible on the right side in the middle, while the inlight camera is in the upper right corner and the physio monitor in the bottom right corner. So these screens are all integrated into one screen called the quad mode, and this helps us visualize flow disruption and microembolization related to the various procedural steps real time. The Simmons 2 catheter is a sharp angle pre-shaped catheter, usually fit for the engagement of the supraaortic vessels, but the bovine arch anatomy in this patient made the cannulation on the left. Uh, so next, a double angle vertebral catheter with soft angle glide wire was brought in to cannulate the left CCA, but attempts again were unsuccessful. At this time, the catheter was exchanged for a Simmons II, again loaded into a BMX catheter this time, and finally the left CCA was cannulated. And the TCD showed minimal embolization with no major perfusion changes. The Simmons catheter was then removed, and a monorail system filter wire was advanced through the stenosis resulting in embolization, as seen as white hyperintensities on TCD. And this filter was then deployed. The filter basket is visible as a ring on the fluoro. And this provided distal protection beyond the lesion. Then a 24 millimeter uncovered stent was brought to the lesion site. TCD showed a temporary flow disruption with greatly flattened waveforms during the deployment. And this was followed by a shower of microemboli. Now note that this is a microembolic shower despite the distal protection, despite the embolic protection device in place. The BMX catheter ended up bouncing out of the left CCA and carried the filter wire with it. And the filter basket did not slip beyond the distal end of the stent. And fortunately, no flow disruption was noted on the TCD doing all this. The BMX catheter was then again advanced into the left CCA and the lesion site was ballooned. And by this time, the TCD signal was unfortunately mostly lost due to ultrasound probe uh, movement from this optimal bone window, that, but microemboli were still visible during ballooning as we see the white hyperintensities. And then final angiogram revealed good stent patency and the resolution of the stenosis with the ECA still severely narrowed. Of course, that was not manipulated on. And then post-operative CT angiography on post-operative day two revealed uh, good stent patency. In summary, a right brachial artery cut then might be preferred in patients with a bovine arch due to easier accessibility of the left common carotid artery. The recoil of the BMX catheter during the first ballooning attempt underlines the importance of firmly securing endovascular catheters at the groin during manipulations. Furthermore, that embolization was not only seen during the placement of the embolic protection device, but despite its proper positioning, there were cerebral emboli on TCD at both stand deployment and ballooning. TCD was highly valuable to the interventionist through providing information about blood flow in the MCA during the entire procedure.